lawyer, father, scientist, writer, revolutionary, governor, vice president, president, philosopher, architect, slave owner. Many words describe Thomas Jefferson. He is the best remembered as the person who wrote the Declaration of Independence and third president of the United States. Jefferson was born April 13, 1743 on his father's plantation of Shadwell located along with the Rivanna River in the Piedmont region of Central Virginia at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. His father Peter Jefferson was a successful planter and surveyor and his mother Jane Randolph a member of one of Virginia's most distinguished families When Jefferson was 14 his father died and he inherited a sizable estate of approximately 5000 acres that inheritance included the house at Shadwell but Jefferson dreamed of living on a mountain in 1768 he contracted for the clearing of 250 feet square site on the topmost point of the 868 foot mountain that rose above Shadwell and where he played as a boy He would name this mountain Montes Shallow and the house that he would build and rebuild over a 40 year period took on this name as well He would later refer to this ongoing project the home that he loved as my essay in architecture The following year after preparing the site he began construction of a small brick structure that would consist of a single room with a walkout basement kitchen and workroom below this would eventually he be referred to as the south pavilion and was where he lived first alone and then with his bride Martha Wells Skelton following their marriage in January 1772 Unfortunately Martha would never see the completion of Monticello she died in the 10th year of their marriage and Jefferson lost the cherished companion of my life Their marriage produced 6 children but only 2 survived into adulthood Along with the land Jefferson inherited slaves from his father and even more slaves from his father-in-law John Wells He also bought and sold enslaved people in a typical year he owned about 200 almost half of them under the age of 16 about 80 of these enslaved individuals lived at Monte Carlo the others lived on his adjacent Elbrim County farms and on his popular forest estate in Bedford County Virginia over the course of his life he owned over 600 100 enslaved people these men women and children were integral to the running of his farms and building and maintaining his home at Monte Carlo some were given training in various trades others worked the fields and some worked inside the main house many of the enslaved house servants were members of the Heming family Elizabeth Hemings and her children were a part of the wells estate and tradition says that john wells was the father of six of hemings 
children and thus they were the half brother and sister of Jefferson's wife Maretha Jefferson gave the Hemings special position and the only slaves Jefferson freed in his lifetime and in his will were all Hemings giving credence to the oral history years after his wife's death Thomas Jefferson fathered at least 6 of Sally Hemings's children four survived to adulthood and are mentioned in Jefferson's plantation records their daughter Harriet and eldest son Beverly were allowed to live Monte Carlo during Jefferson's lifetime and the two youngest sons Madison and Aston were freed in Jefferson's will now Jefferson's three greatest achievements are there after a two year course of study at the college of William and Mary that he began at age 17 Jefferson read the law for 5 years with Virginia's prominent jurist George Wythe and recorded his first legal case in 1767 in 2 years he was elected to Virginia's house of burghers his first political work to gain board acclaim was 1774 draft of directions for Virginia's delegations of the first Contentious Congress rep- reprinted as a summary view of the right of British America. Here he bold, he boldly reminded George III that he is no more than the chief officer of the people appointed by the laws and the circumscribed with definite. powers to assist in working the great machine of government the declaration has been regarded as a charter of american and universal library liberties the document proclaims that all men are equal in rights regardless of birth wealth or status that those rights are inherent in each human a gift of the creator not a gift of government and that government is the servant and not the master of the people jefferson recognized that he prince that the principles he included in the declaration had not been fully realized and would remain a challenge across time but his poetic vision continues to have a profound influence in the united states and around the world abraham lincoln made just this point when he declared after jefferson left congress in 1776 he returned to virginia and served in the legislature in late 1776 as a member of the new house of delegates of virginia he worked closely with james madison their first collaboration to end the religious establishment in virginia became a legislative web battle which would culminate with the passage of jefferson statute of the religious freedom in 1786 elected governor from 1779 to 1781 he suffered an inquiry into his conduct during the british invasion of virginia's in in his last year on office that Although the investigation was finally repudiated by the General Assembly left him with a life long picklessness in the face of the criticism and generated a life long enmity towards Patrick Henry whom Jefferson blamed for the investigation the investigation inflicted a wound on my spirit which will only he curd by all Healing grave Jefferson told James Monarch Monario during the brief private interval in his life following his governorship 
Jefferson completed the one book which he authored notes on the state of Virginia. Several aspects of this work were highly controversial with respect to slavery. In notes, Jefferson recognized the gross injustice of the institution, warning that because of slavery, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God in just is just that his justice cannot sleep forever. But he also expressed racist views of blacks abilities. He recognized that his views of their limitations might result from the degrading conditions to which they had been subjected for many years. In 1784, he entered public service again in the France first as trade commissioner and then as Benjamin Franklin's successor as the U.S. minister. During the this period, he avidly studied European culture, sending home to Monte Carlo books, seeds, and plants, along with architectural drawings, artwork, furniture, scientific instruments, and information. In 1790, he agreed to be the first Secretary of State under the new constitution in the administration of the first president george washington his tenure was marked by his opposition to the policies of alexander hamilton which jefferson believed both encouraged a larger and more powerful national government and were too pro british in 1796 as the presidential candidate of the nascent democratic republican party he became vice president after losing to john of adams by three electoral votes four years later he defeated adams in another hotly contested election and become president the fr first peaceful transfer of authority from one party to another in the history of the young nation Retirement During the last 17 years of his life, Jefferson generally remained as Monte Carlo, welcoming the many visitors who came to call upon the sage. During this period, he sold his collection of books to the government to form the nucleus of the Library of Congress before promptly beginning to purchase more volumes for his final library. Nothing, nothing the irony, Jefferson famously told John Adams that I cannot live with, without books. Unfortunately, Jefferson's retirement was clouded by the debt. Like so many Virginia planters, he had contended with debts most of his adult life, but along with the consent fluctuations in the agricultural markets, he was never able to totally liquidate the sizable debt attached to the inheritance from his father-in-law, John Wales. His finances worsened in retirement with the War of 1812 and the subsequent recession headed by the Panic of 1819. He had felt compelled to sign on notes for a friend in 1818 who died insolvent two years later, leaving Jefferson with two thousand dollar notes. This he labeled his cup de grace as his extensive land holdings in Virginia but with the deflated land prices could not longer cover what he owned. He complained to James Madison that the economic crisis had peopled the western states and drew off bidders for land in Virginia and along the anti-Atlantic seabird. Despite his dad's debts, when he died just a few hours before his friend John Adams on the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, 
July 4, 1826. He was optimistic as to the future of the Republican experiment. Just 10 days before his death, he had de declined an invitation to the planned celebration in Washington but offered his assurance all eyes are opened or opening to the right of man and Thomas Jefferson wrote his own epit and designed the grave marker that was to bear three of his accomplishments and not a word mere. Thank you friends.